Have you ever been flipping through the TV and you stumble upon a show called Hoarders? The show takes a look at lives of people who have filled their homes with stuff in ways that threaten to ruin their lives. Some of these people cannot even use their kitchen appliances because there's so much stuff blocking them. Other people collect thousands of household items. One person has allegedly not even taken out the trash in seven years. Hoarders has been on the air for over 10 years, but the history of hoarding goes way beyond TLC. In this video, I want to tell you about one of America's most notorious hoarders. That's actually a pair of hoarders. They are also probably the only hoarders to have a park named after them. If you've ever been around 5th Avenue and 128th Street in Harlem, you might be know who I'm talking about, the Collier Brothers. Before we start, I want to give a huge shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, but more about them in a bit. So who were the Collier Brothers? Homer and Langley Collier were born to a wealthy New York family in the late 1800s. Their parents, who were first cousins, rubbed elbows with Manhattan high society at the time, but they did not stay in Manhattan for long. In 1909, the eccentric family moved to a four-story brownstone in Harlem. And when I say eccentric, I mean eccentric. Their father used to take a canoe to work as a gynecologist every day. He kept human organs and medical oddities in a jar. The couple separated in 1923 after his desire to turn the family home into a sanitarium was rejected. The Collier brothers and their mother started to become more reclusive. And by 1929, both of the Collier parents had died. Now when their mother died, the brothers asked that the body be picked up and they had to send it out through a first story window. Now a little bit of a backstory. Homer worked in real estate insurance, allegedly walking eight miles to and from work every day. Langley worked as a piano tuner and dealer. Now the pair were odd, but they interacted with society until the early 1930s. Homer actually became blind, so he was forced to leave his job, which left Langley with the job of caring for him. But it's also important to note that their home had been the target of a break-in. The Great Depression, particularly in Harlem, made the Collier House one of particular interest. Rumors swirled that the brothers had money hidden in the walls. Now this made the Collier brothers extremely reclusive. They boarded up their front windows and doors. Langley was only seen leaving through the back door at night to roam the streets. He would carry a wooden box behind him to collect items and other things for that week. He collected weird things, rusty bird cages, tin cans, and piles and piles of newspaper. Due to their father's extensive library of medical information, Langley believed that he could cure his brother's blindness. And part of that cure was to come from a particular diet of 100 oranges a week, peanut butter, and black bread. Now you might be wondering why he was collecting so many newspapers. Well, they were actually collected so that Homer would have something to read when he regained his eyesight, which kind of warms your heart. The brothers continued to retreat into the home, saying that they just wanted to be left alone. They also wanted to protect their home from break-ins. And to do this, Langley created extensive traps and tunnels out of cans, tripwire, and other types of junk that they had around the house. He said it would take him 30 minutes to get from the basement up to the third floor. And all the while, Homer was living in a nest created by Langley. Now, in addition to his blindness, Homer suffered from rheumatism and was not very mobile. He couldn't move around much. So after a while, the neighbors began to treat the home like a haunted house. And the only evidence they had of people living in the home was Langley's late night escapades and the sound of the piano playing from the house. Before Langley had become a piano tuner, he was actually a professional piano player. He allegedly had performed at Carnegie Hall. Now their wealth, esteem, and eccentricities made them the subject of many rumors. One time, the brothers had their water, gas, and electricity shut off. They lived off the grid. Although, it was later revealed that they were well-versed in what was happening in the world. Langley, who had received an engineering degree from Columbia University as a young man, had fashioned a radio out of a Model T. There were also multiple attempts to evict these brothers from the house, as the house was in really bad shape and starting to affect the buildings next door. Now, those attempts were actually thwarted by the brothers' massive wealth from their parents. In one instance, Langley paid off the entire mortgage with one check and sent law enforcement officers away. Well, that all changed in 1947, when police heard reports that one of the Collier brothers was dead in the home. Now, although rumors had been swirling around Homer's deaths for years, the police decided to check it out. They couldn't get in through any of the front doors, though. The foyer was completely filled up with newspapers. Officers had to actually break into the home through a second-story window. Now, after a few hours of searching, they actually found Homer's body. He was starved, sitting upright in a chair. But they didn't know where Langley was. They could not find him. So they put out a search for him. And at this point, the Collier brothers were known throughout the country for their eccentricities. People reported seeing him all up and down the East Coast. Meanwhile... Local authorities continued to clear out the house. 
What they found would blow any episode of Hoarders out of the water. There were traps everywhere. One officer even set off one of the traps, releasing a load of rusty tin cans onto him. They removed an x-ray machine, old phone books, a horse's jawbone, a Model T car, bowling balls, and the top of a horse-drawn carriage. In fact, police found over 25,000 books in the home. In addition to a variety of musical instruments, they also found 14 playable pianos. All in all, they removed over 120 tons of junk, some of which was actually placed into a museum. Now, removing the junk was a difficult process in itself, because 120 tons of junk is a lot of stuff. In fact, the house was so decrepit that the junk was literally holding up the structure of the home. At one point during the search, an investigator fell through the third story floor. Now, over two weeks after the officers found Homer, they found Langley. He was mere feet away from Homer. Langley had gotten caught in one of his own traps and actually suffocated by all of his junk. In the end, the Collier brothers and their hoarding caused their own demise. Now, the house was eventually demolished and replaced with a small pocket park. It was named the Collier's Brother Park. Years passed and people complained that the park's name was in bad taste. What did the Collier brothers do for Harlem anyways? What was their big contribution? Why did they deserve a park? Well, a name change was even put up to vote, but city officials voted to keep the park named after the Collier brothers. They reminded their colleagues that although the brothers were not known for significant achievements in art or science, they did make a mark on the neighborhood. Parents around New York City would tell their children that if they didn't clean up, they would end up like the Collier brothers. So ending this video, I want to ask the question, why do people hoard? Well, some psychologists believe that it is linked to obsessive compulsive disorder, or OCD. Others point to traumatic events. The Collier family began to retreat after the divorce of the Collier parents, and things only got worse when the mother of the family died and Homer's health took a turn for the worse. Anxiety, depression, and even ADHD are tied to hoarding. What we do know is that hoarding isn't just something that takes place for a TLC show, and it's no quirk either. Without the help of a mental professional, hoarding can be fatal. And it can be a serious issue, but it doesn't start out bad. It starts with just being unorganized and a mindset of wanting to keep something. If you feel like your house or apartment could use a bit of tidying up, I actually recently took a course on Skillshare titled the 8-Day Minimalism Challenge. It's a very short class, but Philippa does a great job sharing the basics of minimalism. With over 2,000 students in the course and two projects, I decided to go through it and I highly recommend it. Skillshare actually sponsored this video, and if you don't know who they are by now, they are an online learning platform with over 17,000 classes at the moment. And in my opinion, the price point is very affordable. In fact, one of these classes, to me, is worth way more than the monthly fee that they charge. A premium membership costs less than $10 per month if you pay annually, and if you're interested, the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description of this video will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. Personally, I've been using Skillshare for almost two years now to have immediate access to experts on certain topics, and it's actually my first go-to platform when I want to learn something new. I highly recommend the Minimalism Challenge by Philippa. Again, only the first 1,000 people to join with the link in the description will get a free trial. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video.